Hi, my name is George Coles, and I am an avid retro video game collector. Do a barrel roll! I have decided to document my journeys as I grow my collection. Please join me as I share with you my finds. Welcome to Retro Game Treasure Hunting. Hi everybody, and like the opener said, my name is George Goholes, and this is Retro Game Treasure Hunting. On this episode, we're going to talk about a couple, couple pickups I have, and in case you didn't notice, it's right around Christmas time here, so we're getting into the spirit. Now, I picked these up uh, actually about two weeks ago, and I just haven't had a chance to make a video on them yet. And we're going to go into it. Now, I want to preference everything. I like to say this basically to give you guys an idea of what, what is what. Um, once we get into our ratings, we do everything on a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the, the worst and 5 being the best. And I'll explain them in a bit themselves. Our first game, without further ado, for the Nintendo Entertainment System... The Adventures of Bayou Billy. Wanted to make sure I got it actually right. And this is an interesting game. It's a, a Konami game. It's not one of their it's not one of their highlighted titles. It's not one that you remember a lot. It's not a how like a Castlevania or anything of that nature. But to those of us in this generation that may have had this game or played this game. We remember it because of how extremely difficult it was, and and how it played. And famously, um, Captain N couldn't even beat the game. He had to consult Nintendo Power. So, if you remember the Captain N cartoon, you're old like I am. But anyway, I digress. There's three play modes in the game, which makes it an interesting title. A lot of games didn't do things like that. You have your basic beat em up, which is kind of limited. You have three moves, a punch, a kick, and a, a jumping kick. You have your shooter levels, which could be played with the zapper or the controller, which for those of us that don't have CRT TVs, makes it still possible to play today. And you have dr driving levels. And it's kind of interesting how they jump back and forth between the two. It's kind of basically coming off of the craze of a popular movie from the 80s called Crocodile Dundee, which if you're not familiar with, it was a base, basically what this game is loosely made around. And it's a port of the Japanese game Mad City. Now, a lot of people prefer the Mad City Famicom game and for a couple reasons. When they ported this to America, they changed some of the colors a bit and... One of the things they did, and I'm going to talk about why I think that in a moment, is they ramped up the difficulty. So in other words, you're basically walking through a level doing boss fights all the way through the level. Where characters that in Mad City would die in two, three hits, in this take six or seven. And in Mad City there were more life drops, where there is not as many in this. And the reason why I think this is, is I think Konami wanted to, to level it up. First of all, Konami was known at the time for having difficult games. And secondly, for the rental market. I think they didn't want you to be able to go and rent this game for a weekend and, and beat it. They wanted you to buy the game. So I think that's one of the two reasons what go into making this, because... The, the overall length of the game, if you know what you're doing and you can kind of go through it, you can beat this in about two hours or so. So to for someone that rented it, you could easily beat the game, and there's not a whole lot of replay value. The Famicom version has three different endings. This only has the good ending. So I, I really think that's what it is. I think the, re, the rental home rental market... At the time, they didn't know how to combat it, and they didn't know how to play to it. So their idea of making something 
have replay value is to make it harder. Now with all that being said, let's jump into our ratings. And now, like I said in the beginning, we grade everything on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being the, the worst, 5 being the best. Graphic-wise, I give this a 3. It's right on par with about everything that you see on the system. Um, I, it's nothing special. There's nothing great about it. There's nothing that blows you away. And on, conversely, there's nothing that's overly terrible. It looks good. It plays well. Gameplay, I give it a 3. There is a lot of repetitive nature to it, um, but there is to most of the games of this era. And, there, like I said, it's a rather short game, but again, you're judging it in the era that it came out. Difficulty, and here's where my ratings are a little bit confusing to some people. It's not just how hard it is, is what I consider for difficulty. It's the difficulty versus enjoyability, really. And how difficult a game is versus how, how enjoyable it is. And I go back to this a lot. It's the uh, Dark Souls thing. Dark Souls is an extremely difficult game. However, it's very rewarding when you get past the levels that you had trouble with. So, with that being said, I give this a 2. I think it's more, way more difficult than it has to be. If you have the option to buy the two, I would recommend buying Mad City for, for Famicom. Although I love the graphic on this, I love the sticker, and if the box art's, the box art's the same. If you get one in the box, it's a, I like the graphic a lot. And to me, if you're collecting it, that's something you, you want to, you know, you would look for. Um, replay value, like I said, it's about a two. I don't see any real interest in going back and playing this again. Maybe if you have a light gun, there is a practice mode where you can play the individual levels. You can play the light gun levels if you want to expand your light gun library. Um, Music-wise, this is where it really shines. I give it a 4. I think Konami has, has a history, mostly through their Castlevania games and, um, and uh, Metal Gear games, of putting on some really good moves music out in video games, and this I thought was really spectacular here. Overall, I gotta give the game a 2. The The difficulty and the lack of replay really give it a hit on this. I think it's an interesting game to buy. I think it's a fun game. I think if you could buy it cheap, probably worth it, but there really isn't much to it, and there isn't much on the replay value, so... Unless you're someone like me that has fond memories of it as a child, probably not a game you should pick up. Now our next game, and the final game, is Rayman 2 The Great Escape. And this one's the Nintendo 64 version. Now, one of the reasons, and it's a silly thing, I'm trying to pick up different color carts for the different systems. And in Nintendo, they made different color, they made gold, Yellow, the classic gray, black, red, blue, and green. They made all different color cards, so I kind of want to get one of each. And this was not a bad game to do that with. Um, it's really actually a really good game. It's one of the action-adventure games which, for the Nintendo 64, is where they really shined, is in the action-adventure realm. And kind of... I kind of feel like this one gets kind of overlooked a bit against stuff like Conkers, against stuff like Mario, um, Donkey Kong Country. It kind of gets left a bit, lost a bit in the shuffle, and I really think it's it's a shame that it does because this this game is really fun to play. There is vibrant colors. It looks really good. It's the first Rayman in 3D. Um, there's a lot to it that's that's really fun. It really, to me, compares a lot to Conquer in playability. Whereas Conquer is a mature game, this one is one that your kids and you can play and have fun with each other. And, you know, if you're not necessarily someone that cares about the maturity level, and you just want to play a fun game, this is fun as well. Both games are, actually. Well, that being said, this is another great... Rayman. It's one that I think is overlooked because a lot of people like the 2D Rayman better. I particularly think that this is my favorite of the Rayman, the, uh, the list of games or the library. So to me, this was a must-have. 
Coming with that being said, let's go into our ratings. Graphic-wise, I give it a 4. It looks really good. It still looks pretty. It still looks like something you would want to play today. Gameplay, like I said, it's really fun. I give it a 4 for gameplay. It's right up there with any of the action-adventure games of the time. Difficulty, I give it a 2 for different reasons than Bayou Billy, though. On this one, it's because it's a little too easy. It's meant to be something that the whole family can play. And to me, that helped take a little dip into it. It feels at times like you're running through the game with training wheels on, and it makes it a little bit easier than it has to be. Replay value, I give it a 4. I think the game is so much fun, even with that crutch, that you would go back and play it again and again. Music-wise, it does take another hit. The music on this game is not great. I give the music a 2. I didn't think it was enjoyable. I think, overall, <clears throat> it's not super annoying, but it's not memorable. And there's no great greatness to the soundtrack. Nothing that you're going to hum along with or stick into your mind. Matter of fact, I couldn't think of a song that plays with Rayman. If you played me the soundtrack, I wouldn't be able to tell you what game it was for. Overall, I'm going to give this a 4. I, I rated it a little bit better overall because of the high, high gameplay value, because of how pretty it looks, how vibrant the colors are, and how good they did with the 3D. The fact that it's a little bit of a hidden gem, not a lot of people consider this one of the great Nintendo 64 titles, makes it something that not everybody's going after, so it can be had. It's a reasonably priced game, a really fun game, and just something I really enjoy. And it was another one, much like Bayou Billy, that I had to have because when I'm going back and I'm collecting and I'm trying to collect some of the games I had before, these were two games that I remembered loving the first time around. And Bayou Billy, I believe, I, I really honestly can't tell you what happened in the original one because it's been so long since I got rid of most of my original Nintendo games and either... I traded it away, or it got stolen, or who knows what the hell happened to it. I know Rayman, uh, before anyone, including myself, even thought, you know, 10, 15 years from now, we're going to, 20 years from now, we're going to want to go back and play these games again. No one was really thinking that, so when I got my GameCube, I traded into GameStop, or it might have been EB Games still at the time, all of my GameCube, game, uh, or Nintendo 64 stuff, which I really kind of regret now looking back at it because I had some real bangers. I've got a lot of them back in collecting again, but the fact that I've had to spend money again for them, and I probably spent way more than GameStop or EB or whatever it was at the time gave me for them. So, hindsight's 2020. This is why stuff like this is valuable, because people want to go back and play it again, and obviously, I am one of those people. Very enjoyable. I said if, if, I, if you're going to buy one of the two, I would go at Rayman. Buy you, Billy. I only recommend if you have fond memories of it. It is a good example of a Nintendo game. This is what about your average Nintendo game would be, but that's what the problem is. It has, it's very mediocre. With all that being said, that's uh, my basic review on these. And I'm going to do a little something different here. I know what my next retro game treasure hunting is going to be about, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser on that. A little bit of a teaser. We're going to go to a different planet, and we're going to go there by way of an Asian country. So just a little bit teaser. You'll probably be able to figure it out. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but hopefully you'll tune in for that video. Please make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave some comments, tell me what you think of these games if you have either one of these. If you have recommendations for games you think I should pick up, or games that you'd like to see me pick up and review, let me know. I'm, I'm very open to suggestions, and just let me know what you think. I like talking with you guys, I like that back and forth interaction. With all that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Retro Game Treasure Hunting.